Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Third and Twenty Dynasty Podcast. I'm JT, joined by Jake, rocking the Knicks jersey. Lunas and Frank, the Knicks are in the playoffs. Knicks, so, hey baby. Um, <laughs> first time in eight years, we're Knicks fans. Uh, good for us. I'm. I missed an episode last week. Uh, we, we've been uh, kind of busy over here trying to switch schedules around. I was in the Twitch chat though, throwing my takes out there. Um, if you're listening to us on YouTube or or uh, podcasts. Go ahead and, and like a, or follow us on Third and Twenty on Twitch. Three RD underscore and, and hit us with a sub. Hit us with those juicy um, subs. We we can't get subs yet. We're not a we're not affiliate. Yeah, yet. but on YouTube, unless on YouTube. you're on the tube, just do us a big favor and click that that juicy sub button. That's all you got to do. And by the way, yo, right. if you want to hear us speak on literally any topic you want to ask us between two players, whatever the topic may be, just leave a comment and we'll address it on the next episode. We, we get to have you. Let's get comments. into it, though. Let's get into right. it, dude. I'm ready yep. to fight Lou. So, episode 38. We're in the thick of things. Uh, not a lot going on with our news and notes, except we do have one potential Hall of Fame player who's looking for a trade, and that's Julio Jones. Julio Jones looking for a trade. The Patriots are said to be one of the prime places he wants to go to. Um, there are some other teams in the mix, obviously. You've got, like, the Chargers and the, the Raiders and, uh, you know, Packers, just a bunch of other teams. So, Ravens. guys, what are your thoughts? Ravens, what are your thoughts? Where's Julio ending up? Does he even get traded? I think he's gone. I mean, I don't think you could have an organization like come out and say we would like to trade the guy that's been our face of our franchise for the past 10 years and not trade him. I just think that's not something you do. I think they're both on the same page here. They know that this contract is just not going to work for, for the Falcons here. They're kind of in a bad situation cap-wise, and they need to shed this contract. There will be someone out there that will give them something for Julio Jones. I don't know if it's exactly what they, they thought they would get when they if they were ever to get rid of Julio Jones, but there is someone out there. In terms of fantasy stock, I, I really don't think it helps Julio Jones. I think people might buy into the hype of him going somewhere else, but I really think Atlanta is the best place for him just because of the chemistry that he does have with Matt Ryan and not the, the amount of points that offense is going to score and the amount of times that offense is going to throw the ball. So overall, I, I think this is kind of just a – a, a overall neutral situation for Julio Jones here. Yeah, to um, be honest, go ahead, you go ahead, Lewis. All right, I'll go, I'll go. Yeah. Um, to be honest, like I'm not really concerned about Julio's landing spot. Like I, I get that it might be a drop off in New England or Las Vegas, but to me, I think Julio's just one of those guys where he's going to produce with whoever's throwing him the ball. Like he's a he's just a bona fide stud. My my issue though, if I'm a Julio jo- Jones owner, is can he finally stay healthy for a year? Like, yeah, he's just been missing game. He he even teases you too, which is like the worst part. Like, you'll get like a half healthy Julio Jones, and so he'll just be like a decoy, which is way worse than like just being out because then you could put in someone else who might score points. Instead, he's out there getting you like two points because he's just running ghost routes the whole time. Um, so that that's my main concern is if I was the Julio Jones owner in our league. Yeah, um, I think there are a couple of interesting ones. I don't know how far up people expect the Packers odds to be, but yo, if he goes in Green Bay, that's a spot that can help him. Um, that would increase his stock. I saw it was such a weird quote. I think I sent it to you guys how there was rumors about like he's like, eh, about Matt Ryan's deep ball now. He doesn't think it's as <laughs> sharp. And then he's like, Yeah, I want to play with Cam. It's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, sure. I mean, I, I just know a lot of players around the league love Cam. Um, that would be interesting in New England. I don't think it would be as big a drop-off as people think. I think Belichick in that offense would just give Julio so many targets, so many looks, just off of the amount of looks and catches he's going to get. He would be productive. Um, I will say I think JT nailed it, though, in terms of my biggest concern with Julio is can he stay healthy for 16 games. If you told me Julio will stay healthy for all 16 games next year, his value goes up a lot to me. Like, I, th- I think I think that's the biggest thing because I think people know talent-wise, he's still elite. Like, in games he played last year, he put up good numbers. I think it's just a matter of staying healthy. My other part about Julio Jones, to kind of just wrap it up a little bit, like, if he ends up on the Patriots because he wants to play with Cam Newton, like, what's the politics of Mac Jones going to be then? Because you got to assume that the the Patriots are going to want their, to start their first-round rookie quarterback at some point in the year if he's – Playing I don't. I don't know if that's a lock. I don't know if that's a lock. That that's true. But then, 
if you're the Mac Jones guy, like, are you comfortable drafting him in the first round of a super flex draft, knowing that he's gonna sit a whole year then? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, because Cam's yeah. not the long term guy. Well, we know. we've Mac's seen we've seen guy. it before, where a guy's drafted first round sits an entire year and has great great success post that. Like, you're not. You're not looking to to draft Patrick Mac Mahomes. Jones. Oh, sorry, what? Mahomes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're not Mac drafting Jones Mac Patrick Jones Mahomes, for year one success. If you yeah. want year one success, you might as well trade for like Cam Newton or Jimmy G, especially Cam Newton. If you have Mac Jones for the stack, that'd be mm-hmm. a much better deal. The right. question I want to ask you guys though, before we move on from Julio, is what is what is Julio's price tag right now? I know me and Jake have been in talks for Julio. Jake is saying two second round picks. What would you guys personally be comfortable paying for Julio Jones right now? I mean, if they're late seconds, I'd do it because I just I don't know if there's anyone uh, like in the late second that's going to ever become anything relevant. Um, I think if I, you're looking individual pick, that's tough. Because here, here's the thing. Would someone rather have, like, if I told you right now you could have um, Rondell Moore or Julio Jones? A big part of it does come down to if you're a contender or not. The how do you feel? Which one are you taking? Rond- Rondell Moore is the biggest question mark for me now that we're in just a complete side tangent. But, like, I think if Rondell Moore hits, he's going to hit pretty hard and be, like, an actually very good wide receiver. But, like, He's one of those guys that I still like him because of his height, but like he literally have to be unprecedented. It's gonna, to, it's gonna to be interesting play. to see. But the main point I brought him up is like the first thing that came to mind is in a really early second, and so that's where I'm comparing Julio to some of those guys that are gonna go in the early second. Like you compare him to like an Elijah Moore, you compare him to like a Bateman, um, that kind of range. Like I, I think that's yeah. generally where he is. At that point, I'd rather have those guys. I, so as, it also depends, like, though, because if you're if you're a contender, you could rather want Julio. That's true. Process of Julio's upside for this single second. this single season is greater than any of those guys that we just talked about in that early to mid second round. But obviously, the thing with Julio is he is 32 years old and he has had injury concerns in the past few years. So it, it's tough to trade a guy when his upside is a top five wide receiver for this season and get nothing more than a mid-second so that's the the disconnect i think between the seller and the buyer here jake i'll give it i'll I'll give it an early second that's probably where i'd have i'm saying mid-second for me yeah i think i'm more on like that mid-second kind of train somewhere around like 206 205 204 203 but then you're probably mid so right then who are you getting at 205 just like on your big board who's 205 well, I like Elijah Moore, probably around there. like um, Diami Brown, uh, Trey Sermon. Yeah, it's probably Sermon, around there. Sermon, Marshall, 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 one of those guys, one of those because rec- there's a bunch of receivers in that tier is who you'd be replacing yeah. with. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. I think it comes down to where your team is. He's much more valuable to contenders. All right, so let's move on. Um, last week you guys covered the running backs. The week before we covered the wide receivers. We're going to group the quarterbacks and tight ends together, kind of just because. There's less of them than than everyone else. So let's talk quarterbacks and tight ends. Let's start with the number one guy. We're going to go quarterbacks first, then tight ends. Number one guy, super flex, 101, easy pick, uh, Trevor Lawrence. Now, when we're comparing him with non-rookies, we're talking – he's our tier one guy. He's he's in the likes of Dak Prescott, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow. What are we doing? How are we ranked him compared to these guys? So my ranking is actually the same as how my recent st- – by the way, in the startup draft, all four of these guys are first-round picks um, in startup drafts. Uh, and I agreed kind of with the order it went. I have Dak and Lamar ahead of um, sure. Lawrence, and I'll give Lawrence the edge over Burrow. That's probably how I'd rank them. Do I, I, to- I, I got I to gotta hear that again. He oh, has Dak come? and Lamar over Lawrence and then Burrow below, which I think is pretty pretty consensus at this point, to be honest. But I, I don't dis- disagree. I think Burrow coming off the injury, even adding, you know, college teammate Jamar Chase into the mix there, I still have probably Trevor Lawrence there just based on the upside that we've seen from him at, yeah. at Clemson. Yeah, and it's not a slight out Burrow. I'm sure Jake feels the same way. We're all really high on Burrow. Um I, I think he'll be really good. I think he's going to be one of those guys that like is going to lead the league in lead lead the league 
in passing yards a couple years throughout his career. Um, I just, I, you've given me the upside of Trevor Lawrence. Wait, how did you have it, Lunas? So I have uh, Lamar and Dak ahead of Lawrence and then Lawrence ahead of Burrow. I think that there's a strong argument that Trevor Lawrence is the number two guy. I think I would rather, because it's, it's, it's one of Dak or Lamar you can have over, over Lawrence. I I think I'd take Dak over Lawrence and then Lawrence a smidge over Lamar for like a true dynasty outlook. Uh, like if I'm building around a team around a specific Long player, term. Burrow, like I'm a huge quarterback and startups guy. I'm not sure I'm willing to spend a first round startup pick on Joe Burrow, to be honest. I think that if there's one quarterback that doesn't belong in this tier, it's going to be him. I think. I think from what you're saying, Frank, I'm in the same group as you, where I have it as Lamar, Trevor Lawrence, Dak, Joe Burrow. And I have Lamar and Lawrence very close together, and then I have, like, a little bit of space, and then I've got Dak and Joe Burrow very close together. Um, I mean, you guys touched on a lot. I just think Lamar's finally getting um, solid receivers. Like, he just got two receivers drafted to his team with help. (laughs) Um, He's got a more experienced Marquise Brown and Mark Andrews there. Um, then you talk, you put with um, Trevor Lawrence, who's going to a pretty good team uh, offensively. He's got a lot of weapons around They've him. Weapons, yeah. Yeah, and, and then my thing with Dak is I think people are really starting to overrate him just because of how good he was through the first four games. But he was literally passing at like a record-breaking uh, amount. And I just I don't see him doing that again. I'm not sure how he's going to come back from the injury. I mean. The, that, the injury doesn't really change my my opinion of Dak that much, but I just think people are really starting to build a lot of hype on four games that he had, which mm-hmm. I I don't think is, is right to do. And then Joe Burrow, he got T. Higgins and uh, Jamar Chase, as well as Tyler Boyd, um, still kind of lacking on the offensive line. Yeah, he's got Joe Mixon there. But Joe Burrow's that other guy where it's like, we're hyping him up for, oh, I don't know, like not – great production solid production i also think he's the got like the least rushing ability out of those guys so um that's a knock against him too especially when we've seen like this whole konami code kind of thing coming around um which means like if you have a running uh quarterback you're better off um so yeah it's i don't think you could go wrong drafting one of these in in, uh, the first round in superflex i know frank said burrow in the first round is a little too much for him i personally am still Jackson Burrow in the late first. I'm sorry, I, m- I might with one of those last picks, like 111, 112. Um, here's, the, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, right? With Dak, at least. I really like Dak. I understand he might be a little overrated just because he's just randomly gone up. Mainly, this is the one thing I have against Dak and Joe Burrow is that because Deshaun Watson has disintegrated his top value stock, it seems like people are trying to replace him with Dak Prescott and Joe Burrow. Those are the two guys Dak, yeah. that, that their stock has risen completely because of the void left by Deshaun Watson, which I don't necessarily disagree with. The thing about Dak, though, is that Dak is a league winner. Dak is the kind of guy for the past two years that if you had him on your fantasy team, he was a really, really top quarterback to have. He was consistent. He was the kind of guy that could perform against tough defenses and just overall was a top three quarterback to have on your roster. So I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to speculate with the injuries, but Dak Prescott to me is a top (laughs) five quarterback, probably number five or number four, but he is right up there with quarterbacks I would want to build my team around because the dude is an absolute stud. All right. Anyone have anything to add, or are we good to move on to our, our next tier? I'm good. All right. So we're going to move on to the juicier tier here. Um, tier two, we've got Zach yeah. Wilson, Justin Fields, Trey Lance. That's, you know, the, the next probably top six picks in, in a, a super flex draft, a rookie mm-hmm. draft. Um, they're in the likes of, as Frank mentioned, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Baker Mayfield, and Tua. Uh, sneak it into this tier. So, what do you, where do you guys rank these guys? I think we all have a different 
opinion on, on these three rookies and then yeah i think it's just going to be a mess with how we rate them towards yeah. all these other i mean guys. i mean i think i think we might actually all agree with this one take except for you jt you might you might have difference out of all okay. these guys i probably value russell wilson at one yes yes i i agree um, uh, yeah i'll agree i'll agree yeah um what gets inter- what gets dicey is i think the kind of we can all agree the most dicey one is how do we compare deshaun watson's value uh, to yes. some of these other rookies. We could just um, exclude Deshaun out of here because he's such a weird a good, circumstance. I think that's a good idea just because... His, it's, it's, it, so when, hard it's so hard. Bearing in all this legal stuff that's hovering over Deshaun Watson, I think he would be a tier one quarterback here. So just the fact that he's even listed at this value now just shows how serious this stuff is. We're not going to touch on it. We don't. We're not doing we anything know. with it, but... No, let's touch on it. Let's touch on it. Deshaun Watson. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. Um, <laughs> all right. So, Lewis, real quick, just just break it down. Give us all your rankings on these guys, and then we'll pick it apart and tear you okay. apart for your opinion. Okay. I'd have Russell Wilson at one. I'd have Trey Lance at two. Oh, okay. Um, hmm, this is tough. Um. Give me Fields at three. You really going with the Bears quarterback? Uh, I think the Bears coaching mean? situation is going to be different in a year or two. Um, Zach Wilson versus Baker and Rodgers and Tua is tough. Because um, Baker proved himself last year. Rodgers, you know you're probably going to get how many more years lead out of him? Like four or five? Um I was How about, is there a ranking? Tua is just, just getting going. Last. Who do you think is last? Out of this? Yeah. I mean, my hot take is Zach Wilson. Oh. Who saw that coming? JT hates <laughs> Zach Wilson. I've I've been last. on that train. Yeah. I also know JT uh, doesn't like Tua. No, I, I, I don't mind Tua, actually. Go ahead, Jake. I think the last person I have in here is Baker. And that's just because his upside, I think, is the lowest of all of these guys. I, I, I think agree. he's a very. I think, I think he's a very. I think Baker's a very safe play, but I think that Browns team really found its identity last year, where it was a run first team and let Baker do just enough to get this team to win, which is great for the Cleveland Browns. But in terms of fantasy production, we saw that Baker put up a lot of fourteen to sixteen point games that just weren't what I would like to see out of a guy that's ranked this high. I think the question with this tier is how much risk are you willing to take on, right? Because, like, Baker, I feel like while you did say his upside probably is kind of capped, Jake, like, I feel like he has a very solid floor. Um, oh, I agree. I think he's yeah. I think he's a very safe pick here. I think that the Browns have found their franchise quarterback finally after all this time. But, like I said, I think this team is going to use Nick Chubb and they are going to use Kareem Hunt as most as possible just because that's how they win games. They chew the clock and this, the, those are two of the best running backs in the league. So, to be fair, though, that is priced in, though, because I think out of all these guys, Baker and Aaron Rodgers are the best value for for money buy in these tiers. Because you could say it's two of we tried to trade for Tua, and you got to pay a pretty high end <laughs> quarterback price for Tua. Like Tua, to a lot of people, especially ones that drafted him, is still valued at around that quarterback one price. I, I think Tua is not a great buy right now in most leagues. Whereas Baker and Rodgers, Baker, you're not paying a quarterback one price for. I can imagine that you will not get a top seven pick in this rookie draft trading Baker straight up in most leagues. Um, I think that every single person would rather have these three tier two rookies over Baker and even guys like Najee Harris and maybe even like consensus people on Devontae Smith. You know, if you tried to get 108, 109 for Baker straight up, especially during a rookie draft, dude, people are going to be like, ah, nah, fuck that. Fuck them. Um, fuck the Bakers. I've, I've got a very different outlook on this class, I feel like, where it's tough by. I am going to put Russell Wilson first, and, and then I've got my Justin Fields and Trey Lance after him. I think I like I know what Keep Trade Cut says and what consensus says, where these guys are all kind of in the same tier, but I'm putting those three guys, Russell Wilson and then the two rookies, Fields and Lance, in like a separate tier. 
And then I'm putting I, – I would put Aaron Rodgers in that tier if I knew that, like, what his outlook was going to be, like, even two years from now. But, like, all this drama and everything, I don't know what's going on with Aaron Rodgers, so I'm going to lump him in into that next tier. And then I'm going to put Baker, Tua, and then finally Zach Wilson at the bottom of that tier. Um, just because I'm not a Zach Wilson believer I've talked about before on recent podcasts. Um, but but with either of those tiers, I, I just think um, rookies aside, these guys are like those solid guys that you know what they're going to do for your team. Like you know what you're getting out of these guys essentially. Um, where it's Russell Wilson, you're getting a top 12 quarterback. With Aaron Rodgers, you're getting a top 12 quarterback. But like how long are you getting a top 12 quarterback yeah. for? And then like – Baker and Tua, you're getting probably high end quarterback two numbers, which you know is very good for superflex. If you have like quarterback thirteen as your second superflex guy, like that's you know that's not stopping you from winning a championship certainly. So uh, I don't know these these are tiers though that like I really like in startups. Like I'd be going out and I'd be trying to get most of these guys in a startup draft. I I, I actually I think that Baker is much higher rated for me than Tua. Um, Interesting. You know, well, one, I'm, one just, thing I'm I, just curious because I'm the opposite. I think Baker's just safer. Yeah, but uh, here's really the thing. I looked at a lot of Browns film last year on a Browns analysis, a Browns offense analysis that we did towards the end of the season. And one thing that is clearly apparent is that Baker Mayfield was the most improved player on that offense from week one to like week 15. Right, and it was not close. He was the main reason why that and some schematic changes is why the Browns offense became what it was. Like, and I think that people don't really give Baker enough credit. He changed up his throwing mechanics. If you look at that one Sunday night football game, I think it was against the Ravens, Chris Collingsworth made a great point about how he changed his front foot on his throws to give him a little more power and accuracy. What else did he do? I mean, his reads were just better. He was like a, a tick faster, right? And it made a huge impact on on this Browns offense. And I think that Baker right now is one of the better buys. Obviously, Russell Wilson, to me, top guy. I, I think the real question, though, before we move on from this tier, is which guys are you taking over Aaron Rodgers? Which rookies? Because Aaron Rodgers, like you guys have kind of mentioned, is the weird one. He's the one where we know you're getting someone good, but – if you, you know, you ha- you kind of have to be a contender for Rodgers, it seems like. You really are not confident yeah. three years, four years down the line that he's even going to be playing. And to me, I think Wilson and Lance are the two that I would take over Rodgers in, in a vacuum. Um, as a contender, I think it's a different story. Just because you're, you're you, don't, you don't want Russ Wilson, right, Frank? No, Zach Wilson. Oh, well, yeah, Russell Zach Wilson, Wilson, I would as well. Um, but it just in a, if I'm building a team, just in, you know, I'm not competing. I'm not rebuilding. I'm just building a team in a startup. Wilson and Lance are the two I would take over Rodgers. Clearly, we would probably all want Rodgers if we're competing, but Rodgers and Wilson would just blow all these other guys out of the water as a, if you're a competing team. But those are the I'm two not, guys I would take over Rodgers in a startup. I'm not going to lie. In a startup, I think I would take all three of those. Rogers. I agree. I would take all three of them in a startup. All uh, Russell rookies. Wilson goes above all of them. But yeah, we're awesome, but above guys. all of the rookies, but over Aaron Rodgers, I will take Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, and especially Damn, Trey seriously? D- oh. Dude, I, I I mean, I'm sure all of us like we have different personal rankings, but I still really like all three of them. I think all three of them will be good NFL quarterbacks. Yeah, you but what about Rodgers? The dude is a good NFL. Yeah. He just won an MVP. He's he's great, but like But he's thirty six. I think I think also the thing with them is like obviously there's a chance if they bust their value goes down, but like Rodgers, I feel value is not going to go much higher than right now for the rest of his career. It's only going to decrease more and more as he gets older, and we all already know how good he is. Versus those rookies, like if they have like a even not even just on his level, but close to Herbert type rookie season, then you have like a top seven dynasty asset, top six dynasty asset. Okay. Yeah, but the odds are like I'm not saying not yeah. as good, but it's similar to that, no, even no, on a Joe no. Burrow level. The the odds are one of these guys like is going to bust. Like, the overwhelming odds are, like, one of these guys is not going to be good. Um, in my opinion, it's Zach Wilson. I'm, I think you guys probably would say otherwise of who the bust would be. 
But uh, that's I'm not taking Zach Wilson over Aaron Rodgers because, in my opinion, I think he's the one most likely to be the bust over these guys. You know, to be honest, I'm I'm rethinking that Lance a little bit. I think that I'm I'm the opposite. I think Wilson might be the only one I take over Rodgers. I I still really like Aaron Rodgers. I think Aaron Rodgers is criminally underrated. The dude is just an absolute stud. Um, in a startup, so you're taking Rodgers over the uh, Lance and Fields. I don't know. Um, it's close. I think it also depends on what I'm like, what happens in the draft a little bit. And I haven't, I haven't looked at Aaron Rodgers' ADP, so I think that that also kind of like plays into it. You know, who, where am I picking? Yeah. Am I getting a pick around one of these guys? But I think it's really close, and I, I think it's more of a testament to Aaron Rodgers being underrated than these quarterbacks. I think that they're going to wildly bust. No, I'm with you. I do think Aaron Rodgers' value is a little bit because he's still going to be good for another five, six years. Um, it's just that's if he's playing. Long. Yeah, <laughs> if he retires and goes into jeopardy, um, it's not a bad retirement gig if we're going to be honest. It's a great retirement gig. I bet he does do that when he does actually retire in a couple of years. I don't know if Jeopardy would want him. Um, all right, moving on though, we're on way off topic. What do you mean Jeopardy wouldn't want him? Jeopardy would want well, him. Jeopardy would okay throw for... at least two first round picks for Aaron Rodgers. They already <laughs> offered him a the contract. Game, like, they offered him a contract. Does Aaron Rodgers fit? Like the the main Jeopardy crowd, uh, dude. He fits know. that offense well. perfectly. All right, that <laughs> Jeopardy <laughs> offense Jeopardy is a round. puzzle piece fit for Aaron Rodgers. He fits the scheme. Yeah, he fits the scheme to a T. <laughs> Jake, you got any thoughts on Tua? You all know I love Tua. Um, I went out and traded for him this off season, but he's a guy that obviously a year removed from surgery. I think they really limited the playbook last year as a rookie, just to get him comfortable in the NFL, get him comfortable, you know, playing at that speed. Because obviously college and the NFL is two different games. Uh, moving into year two, they add his former college teammate, obviously Jalen Waddle with the Waddle. sixth pick. Um, you know, I think, it, you know, uh, they signed Will Fuller, which makes it, that receiving core just super fast in general, which I think just kind of, kind of is what they had at uh, Bama with, you know, Ruggs and Devontae Smith and, and Judy and all, and, and Waddle, obviously. So I think this offense, they're really tailoring it to Tua. I've seen a lot of rumors that this playbook is going to look a lot different than it did last year for Tua just because they're ready to just open it up and see if they actually found their franchise quarterback or they're going to have to go get another one because I think this is a year that you're really going to be able to tell. I think last year, it, like I said, they just eased them into it, and I think they're really going to let Tua rip a year off the injury, all weapons loaded up. I think this is the time to buy Tua, even though the price, Frank said, might be high because people still value him at that. There was a reason that there was the, literally the saying tank for Tua. He's a very talented player, and there's no doubt that the Dolphins are building around him, and I think it's just a perfect time to get him before he explodes. This is this is his big season. Next season is huge for dictating. Uh, oh, completely. He could turn into Drew Locke, you know. Uh, like If, if he so goes out and, and busts, he just Drew Locke, and he's out of the league in three years. Like, very easily could. I, I don't think he will, but that is one of the options here. He does have similar caliber level talent around him like Drew Locke does. Um, did you guys see that Jalen Waddle got the, the same kind of grade as Trevor Lawrence for the Jaguars in, in their war room? Um, they kind of Jalen Waddle had league. the same grade as Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, that was yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't put those two together, in my opinion. No. But taking him what was he sixth overall pick mm -hmm. so it's a high high draft pick for the dolphins a lot of capital invested in this guy um better a lot, hope of, capital invested in that, a lot of capital invested in that offense in a hole now between two yeah. last year fourth overall or fifth overall and then waddle this year so all right let's, yeah, let's now, move on to mac jones though. let's move on to mac right. jones mac jones talk um so i'm i'm the patriots guy here i'm also notably probably the lowest on mac jones out of the group um, he's our tier three quarterback. He's kind of an interior zone. Uh, he's around Jalen Hurts level, Ryan Tannehill, Carson Wentz um, on his comeback tour. I guess I'll kick this off. I just – I like all three of these guys <laughs> over Mac Jones. Um, Tannehill, I just think, is always criminally underrated. And, you know, it, it doesn't help that the second best wide receiver for the Titans is – 
Josh Reynolds, Desmond Fitzpatrick, like I, Julio Anthony Frisker, the tight end, <laughs> potentially Julio Jones. But I, I just think Ryan Tannehill, since he, since he's come to um, Tennessee, he's been a very consistently good quarterback. Like he's had his down game, sure, but like what quarterback really hasn't, especially at like the value that he's at. Um, he finished as quarterback eight last year, looking at his history. Finished as quarterback eight, and then. You know, even when he's at Miami, when he played as a full season, he also finished a quarterback eight. So we're talking like top twelve quarterback potential, consistently quarterback two at least. Like, I just think Ryan Tannehill is probably my top guy here. He's gonna be very consistent. Um, then I'd even put the, the issue is like in this tier, there's a couple guys I'm low on. Right, I'm also low on Jalen Hurts. I get that he's got the rushing ability, but like, I really didn't see that much from Jalen Hurts last year, and and I just am not confident enough to put him um, much higher. And then Carson Wentz, we saw what happened with Carson Wentz at the beginning of the season. Uh, the other is Eagles quarterback. Now he's trying to make a comeback on the Colts. Which Wait, time I do out, time out, JT. Why, why don't you like Jalen Hurts? I just – I don't think he's that good of a quarterback, to be completely honest. Like, he's got the rushing ability, which is – very nice for for dynasty football, but like if he's not the starting quarterback in two years, like what's the matter? Like, I, I just I don't think he's going to be the guy that's going to win the Eagles games. And people could be like, oh, but he didn't have a lot of help. Well, he's not really having much more help this year either, right? Like their offensive line is coming back and they should be healthy, but they're an offensive line that always has injury concerns. So who's going to say they're not going to get injured this year? Like, I I, I am willing to call that a wash. Like maybe they're healthy, maybe they're not. His wide receiving core, not that great. I know that they got Devontae Smith 10th overall, but I'm just not the Devontae Smith guy here either. Um, Jalen Rager is the other guy. I, I do think Jalen Rager still can have a comeback, but like we've seen it when, when you know, first round rookie wide receivers don't really produce in their first year. It's way less likely that they are going to produce. Um, then Ertz is probably gone. So then you just got Goddard and then like a bunch of Jags. Um, and Lewis's boy Travis Fulgham. So, <laughs> and a new coaching staff, and new coaching staff who let's didn't be honest, draft right? him. He didn't draft him, and I'm not that in love with this this coaching staff. I like it's just like, oh, we saw what um, Frank Reich did. Let's just get Frank Reich's understudy here, but it's not Frank Reich. So I I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like this team as a whole. I'm trying to – I'm avoiding all Eagles offensive players. Sorry, Linus. Um, I think with Jalen Hurts, it's tough. I will say to the coaching staff's belief in him, uh, they passed on Justin Fields. Uh, I think I that does hold some value. Um, he fell to them at – well, not fell, because they were at the 10th spot. They could have picked him. They decided to go to Devontae Smith instead. I think this year is obviously a huge year for Jalen Hurts. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to – because here's the thing with him versus Mac Jones' argument. Um, the him versus Mac Jones argument is pretty much upside versus kind of safety. I feel I feel less risky having Mac Jones because they just invested a first round pick in him. They're going to give him multiple years to be the starter. But Jalen Hurts has the upside to be a better quarterback because of his rushing for and it's like how much faith do you have in him to believe in to improve as a passer? Because I will give him some break. Like as much as everyone assumes Carson Wentz is going to have a bounce back season, Carson Wentz played. Arguably worse than Jalen Hurts in the same offense last year. They both got to well, go. That offense was that off the way that offense was structured last year, especially with the injuries to the offensive line. There was no way Carson Wentz was going to like be better than Jalen Hurts there. They, they needed saying, a quarterback if, that if, could if, get out and move, and that's exactly what Jalen Hurts did. And it I'm provided saying, a, in, an energy jolt to this entire offense, and, and we saw what happened. Yes, they, the team played better with Jalen Hurts, the quarterback, last year. But I don't think that means that he's a better quarterback than Carson Wentz. Well, I'm not saying I mean, that. I, and, I, and you I'm all saying, know I wasn't a big Carson Wentz fan. I, I you know, know, I'm you get arrested for your Wentz You all know I wasn't a big Carson Wentz fan. <laughs> so that should Let's, say something. I'm saying, oh, everyone's just automatically assuming Wentz is going to have the bounce back year and just kind of discounting Jalen Hurts, like ignoring the Wentz in that offense. I mean, there is no doubt so much that the, Jalen Hurts. It, the Indian, Indianapolis situation is – Almost like a thousand times better. Best offensive line in the league. J Jonathan Taylor behind him, uh, and then Pittman and Ty on the outside. That's better than he's ever had in in, in Philly. 
So yeah. with I don't know with, about not ever yeah. had in 2017 that offense 2017, was disgusting. Good. They had the best well, offensive line in football, and Alshon Jeffrey in his prime. Alshon Jeffrey was good then. And, and Zach Ertz. Ertz prime, like dude, they that 2017 good team, good run. They had like four good running backs, but here they won um, the Super Bowl. Not with Wentz, but yeah. <laughs> yes. Here's even, the thing I will say about Aguilar Mac Jones that, that that I think doesn't do him justice in this kind of conversation because I I kind of agree with JT to a certain extent, even as someone that really likes Mac Jones. When you put him up against Jalen Hurts, Ryan Tannehill, and Carson Wentz, it is hard to like say, oh, I'm confidently picking Mac Jones over these guys. But the thing about Mac Jones, and this is kind of like the difference that I have with Mac Jones in a startup versus a rookie draft, is like this is almost comparing his startup value, which I think is really dog crap. I think picking Mac Jones in a startup is super risky and kind of a bait. But compared to a straight-up rookie draft, where you can pick up Mac Jones at the end of the first round, sometimes even early in the second round, a lot of drafts, that's where the value comes in for me because you are not sniffing Jalen Hurts, Ryan Tannehill, or Carson Wentz with a very early second round pick where in a lot of drafts, that's where Mac Jones is being picked. And that might be because he's not right now the day one starting quarterback or people don't like him because of the rushing floor, which I understand is definitely an issue, but it's so priced in in rookie drafts to the, to the point where I think that there's huge arbitrage value with Mac Jones straight up in rookie drafts that you can take advantage of. Startup drafts, I completely agree with you guys. I think I would have him last in this tier, maybe ahead of Jalen Hurts. Um, but I think Tannehill is like oh, the so, clear number one. So you don't really like Hurts either then if you have Hurts? As, as uh, I don't know. I think that they have similar – Similar. I just think Mac Jones as a passer is better. Mac Jones as a well, passer yeah, is really good. Mac and Jones like Jalen Hurts, I've been watching some tape on him. Like he he has a lot of work to do on on concepts. But Jalen Hurts is nice. I don't know. I, I don't really. I'm not super high on Jalen Hurts. I'm not super low on Jalen Hurts. Um, yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't. I'm low on Jalen Hurts versus consensus. That's what I'll say. Because I you know. I've seen people even say, like, oh, Lamar kind of struggled in his first year. Like, this could be Jalen Hurts. And to that, I just think they're not the same player. These are not the same guys. Wait, Lamar um, Lamar played, like, five games. What do you mean? And didn't he only lose one of I'm, them? I'm, I've seen on Reddit and Twitter, like, oh, Lamar didn't produce that much in his first, like, in his Oh, Patrick Mahomes season. struggled his rookie year. <laughs> well, he like, play shit. Year. He, yeah. This is the same thing with Lamar. Lamar played, yeah. he didn't even play half a season. How are we going to say he struggled? Like, Oh, he's well, struggling. Jalen Hurts only played four games. games. Three, four um, games, whatever Jalen Hurts played. Yeah, but who's um, saying no is anyone saying that Jalen Hurts really struggled his rookie year? Everyone I feel like thinks that Jalen Hurts looked great his rookie year. I, I don't think he looked great. He, he looked, looked better than I thought he was compared to what they all what was happening with Carson Wentz, Mr. Sure. Yipmeister. <laughs> like, dude, Jalen Hurts was like a power send. That has more to say with what I said with about Carson Wentz just being absolute dog shit last year. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a possibility that Wentz just straight up had a big old case of the yips? Like, I mean, definitely possible. No, mentally, no, he was definitely fucked up mentally. I would think everything just kind of got in his head last year. Because you can um, say the yips aren't real, but it's a thing in baseball. Like, it is 100% a thing with pitchers that sometimes you're just in the groove and other times you're just like, dude, I'm out there just – it's just not working, you know? It's just not happening. Well, I, I think most people will say confidence is, like, a top trait that you need in a quarterback. And, like, if you have the team training to get a quarterback in, like, the second round um, drafted behind you, you know, like, that's probably going to shake your confidence. You probably thought you were very much the, the clear starter, and now you've got this guy right over your shoulder. It's going to shake your, your mental ability. But, like, you know, the greats don't – care they're like i'm i'm number one quarterback i'm gonna be the guy i i just carson Wentz obviously isn't a great but i think he's good i think he's okay way better than what jake will say about him but dude he was a 2017 mvp candidate <laughs> let's get a let's get a okay no as much as i and Wentz, jake jake can't be talking too much about Wentz. listen he would talk about 2017. I would talk about 2019, 2018, 2016. Well, 2016 was his rookie year. Um, but I think Wentz is still a good quarterback. I just think last year he was in his own head. 
Actually, real quick before we move on, anyone yep. you taking Mac Jones over in this? On that list? Mm-hmm. Him and Hurts are really close. Um, I, I still think I'm taking Hurts. If, like, if I'm I a think contending I'd lean team, Hertz. I'm taking Hurts. Lean, definitely if I'm contending, I'm leaning Hurts. Because I think Hurts, when he starts, he's going to be a good fantasy quarterback. It's just how long is he going to be a starter for? Um, Mac Jones, I'm taking over Wentz and Hurts. Okay. He's, I respect he's, that. He's the last guy for me. I'm I'm not a Mac Jones guy. Although I, I do love think Mac Rome. Jones is like one of the top buys in a rookie draft, though. Like late well, in the yeah, first round is first. super super good value for him. So, all right, do you want? Let me take us on a side tangent real quick. So, if you're listening to this podcast, a Dynasty Fantasy Football Podcast, you probably know Dynasty nerds. If not, they're I'd say probably the top Dynasty site, Dynasty group, whatever you want to call it. Um. They did a, a mock draft, right? And I get it. Last year, they said Justin Herbert would be quarterback three oh, that, overall. In the no, that shit was – is that the one with that pick 11? Yeah, hold on, like hold pick, on. Yeah, shit was yeah so, so last year, they said Herbert should be your third overall pick. And to be fair, no one else was saying that, and they are probably right. This year, they have Mac Jones going as like quarterback or, or pick oh, six overall, which I just can't get behind. But even worse – they have Jamar Chase all the way back at like why like pick eleven one point one one, which is just nutty to me. They've got Devontae Smith and all these guys over him. I just think if Mac Jones is pick one eleven, that's probably a good steal. But if you're listening to Dynasty nerds and you're picking Mac Jones at like one hundred five, one hundred six, you're just reaching too high. I feel like I don't hate it. One hundred five, one hundred six. You're picking Mac Jones. I think that I would the. the- Couple of players I would take 100% over Mac Jones are Wilson, Lawrence, um, Javante Williams, Najee Harris, Kyle Pitts, Trey and then Lance, probably Zach Devontae Wilson. Smith. I already said Zach Wilson. I dude, I think that there's a legitimate argument to have Mac Jones over Trey Lance. So you're taking. You're I'm not taking saying Mac I Jones. would take Mac Jones over Trey Lance. <laughs> But I think that there is definitely an argument to be made. And I'm not saying, like, because I like Mac Jones a lot. I think Mac Jones is a good freaking quarterback. It's just his his lack of rushing is, like, a legitimate issue. You know, like, I used to be one of those dudes that didn't believe in the whole, oh, rushing thing. Like, And then we, we did a study on it here on the pod, and it does matter. So, like, you, you have to take it into account in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. And God I knows still think it. I'd go Lance over Jones, but – I, I do. I like Mac Jones a lot. I think Mac Jones is good. It's just I think he's good in the sense of he'll be a good QB two, like a reliable QB two for a long time. More so than oh, this dude is going to be breaking records left, right, and center. So who do you compare Trey Lance to then? Like, do you have a player comp for him, or like a guy that you see him scoring comparably amount? Not even like play style, but just like number. of where he finishes every year. Who is he? Is he Kirk Cousins where he's back in QB1? And who, who, Trey Lance or, or Mac Jones? Oh, both. Well, Trey Lance has the profile of like – in his college profile, he has the profile of like a Lamar Jackson where it's like he, he has a ton of rushing production. Over half of his – if you were to take his college production and put it into fantasy points, 55% of his fantasy points from college games would have been from rushing. Um. So, like, I think that's the reason why a lot of people like Trey Lance more is that he has that QB1 upside and, he, uh, you know, he's in San Francisco. Um, listen, I, I like Trey Lance, too. I'm not against Trey Lance. I think that – I don't, just don't think he's the consensus 102 for me. Um, I he's think not, he's a good player, though. He's not my 102, Justin Fields is. But, man, to, to even think about taking Mac Jones over, like, Jamar Chase or Kyle Pitts or – Javante Williams, I just I can't do it. I can't do it. Can't do it. Um, all right, let's move on. We're on to tier four. These are kind of the the other guys that would probably have potential that we're looking to see start. Um, Frank's guy from the start, Kellen Mond. Uh, then you also have Davis Mills and Kyle Trask, and then they're compared to the likes of Jordan Love, Jimmy G, Drew Locke, and Ryan Fitzpatrick. So, what do you guys think about this tier? Give me Kellen Mond. <laughs> Knew that was coming. Um, Shocker. <laughs> I'd probably have Kellen Mond number one on this list. Uh, uh, compared to everyone else, it's hard well, to I mean, make Jimmy G. 
I might put is... Jordan Love at two. It's close. Um, I just think Kellamon is the easy one for me in this tier. I can the, say that. The thing about this this tier to me is it's a lot of uncertainty. Obviously, the three rookies in, in Trask, Mon, and, and Davis Mills, they're likely not seeing the field this year if if for very long. Put it that way. Um, just, you know, behind Kirk Cousins and Trask behind Tom Brady and, and Davis Mills in Houston. I don't know what's going on there. He might have the chance to see the field the most. But outside of – and then you go to the, to the guys that are already in the league. Jordan Love – I don't think Rodgers gets traded at the at this very second. So he, I don't think he sees the field. Jimmy G, he he's going to start the season, but you know he has the number three pick and Trey Lance looming right behind him. Like obviously his days are limited in in San Francisco moving forward. Um, Drew Locke's the next guy in this tier, and obviously we know they just traded for Teddy Bridgewater. Obviously that's not a May probably not a long term solution, but it is a guy that you know the Broncos could feel more comfortable with in winning games this season with, just because he's more consistent. So, and then you have Fitz Magic, baby. I think he might be the best option in this whole tier for this season alone, Whoa. just in a vacuum. Just because if you look at his weapons, he's gonna have McLaurin and and Deont- De- uh, Diami Brown and Curtis Samuel. So that this is he's gonna just chuck the ball. That's what he's gonna do, and he loves doing that. So. For this season alone, I think Ryan Fitzpatrick's the best move, but you know he doesn't have anything left much after this, dynasty wise. Who pick? Pick your top like three guys from this tier. I'll go first. I'm taking Mond, Jimmy G, and mm, Davis Mills. I uh, I think you guys are just overlooking something here. I I think uh, Jordan Love is in my top three there. Yeah. Lewis, yeah. exactly. I, I've been – I'm not even that great of a Jordan Love guy, like not that high on him. I actually traded him in Ireland. Still League. first round QB. He was, he's the only first round pick out of this group. And like as I mentioned before, like if you're not a first round pick, your chances of hitting are, are so low for quarterbacks. And we've got guys that – the rookies are either end of the second, beginning of the third. Whoa, um, whoa, whoa, the hold rookies. on here. Hold on here. Hold on here. Because if Hold we're on. gonna if we're gonna take the data analytics stuff into consideration, Jordan Love is not in the tier of first round picks with high success rate. If you look at Jordan Love's that that end of the first round success rate, the only guy in recent times that has really succeeded from there is Aaron Rodgers. Lamar. Lamar Jackson. Oh yeah, Lamar Jackson as well. I'll give you that. I forgot Fair. about him. Fair, but again, I, I'm I'm the one to say that is it's probably top fifteen picks. If you're not a top fifteen pick, you're not worth it. I just think, though, if you're pick 26 and a team traded up for you and and you're supposed to be a successor to a Hall of Fame quarterback, I like you more than the likes of Kellen Mond and Davis Mills and and Kyle Trask, where I get Kyle Trask has probably opportunity in front of him or or at least perceived opportunity, right, with Brady going to go. But I think with Brady also goes Bruce Arians. Bruce Arians said himself, like, Tom Brady basically started coaching the team. I don't think Bruce Arians really is that good of a coach. He's a player's coach. I'll give him that. I just – I don't think he's that good of an actual NFL coach. Then you've got Davis Mills in the mess of Houston. I actually would pick Davis Mills second here to Jordan Love. I still don't like the situation that much. Um, I – like – you have no idea what Houston's going to look like in, in two years, but currently it's just a wasteland. Um, and then Kellen Mond, like Frank loves Kellen Mond. You two, you know, you're not that low on Kellen Mond. I, I'm just the Kellen Mond hater here. I don't, I don't see anything from Kellen Mond. I don't want Kellen Mond. So with that, I'd be taking Ryan Fitzpatrick as my third guy. And then, because I, I just think Jimmy G's probably done too. So me, it would be love. It'd be Davis Mills and then Ryan Fitzpatrick. Fitz magic, baby. Fitz magic. Lynn, what about yeah. you? Pick your top three. Uh, my top three, I'll go Mond, Love, Fitzpatrick. Trask. Hey, that was mine. Oh, no, no, no. That was not mine. That was not mine. You said Mond Close. first. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're not taking your boy Kyle Trask. I just said Trask will be fourth. Okay, Trask will be fourth. Be All fourth. Right. I mean... Can't be that high on Kyle Trask if you're taking him after like a 38 year old <laughs> journeyman quarterback. Him and Fitzpatrick are close. <laughs> Tells you all you need to know about Kyle Trask, folks. Lewis isn't even taking him. 
I don't know, dude. I still think that Mond has the highest. I mean, Love definitely his upside is really high. I just, I, I hated, not hated. I was not a huge fan of Jordan Love's tape. Um, out of Nevada, I actually think the kid they have now, Carson Strong, is, is looking a lot better than Jordan Love was. Um, t- to me, it's just Mond. Like, if Mond hits. I feel like I'm getting a QB one. I'm getting a quarterback, the likes of these other top end dudes that are being picked really early on the draft. Obviously, if you look at the data analytics and the situation and stuff, you can talk yourself out of it. But the price that I'm paying for Mond is incredibly low. You know, you're getting him late second round. His consensus pick is not even in the top 24 picks. It's in the early third round right now. I think, I think actually in, uh, Keep trade cut. He's just snuck into overall 23. So he's looking back in second. Yeah, but I mean, in every single draft I've done, he's not gone in the second. And there's it's there was two six point passing touchdown leagues. He didn't go in the second round. That's crazy. Um, like, yeah, yeah, I value him as a second mm-hmm. rounder. There are definitely drafts where he does, but from my personal experience, you can pick him up in the early third round or very, very late second, like Jake said, 23, 24. 301 somewhere around there um i love that price for him i I absolutely love that price for him yeah there's a huge chance he busts but dude i'll believe in my guy um i also think that the vikings general manager um and their whole staff is just really good so i I kind of like the situation that mond is in he's not going to be thrown into the fire year one he can develop work on a couple of his issues and then if he ever gets a starting gig he's on an offense with a plethora of talent all right. What is um, when is Kirk okay. Cousins' contract? When is Kirk Cousins' contract up? Two years, I think. I think Linus was right. I mean, I got it. They don't really it, have it, an out from it either, though. It's like an expensive contract. Yeah, it is. But uh, it is after next. So just to put that yeah, in consideration with Calamon. All right, well, that should be it for the quarterbacks. Are there any other quarterbacks that you all want to shout out, I guess, in a Tier 5, the any other quarterbacks? Uh, Ellinger is someone I'd take a dart throw on. Same. Maybe in the fifth round. I think Ellinger is the only other quarterback in this draft class that I would be willing to roster as a rookie. As of right now. Maybe he and Book, if I have some space for him. But, yeah, I mean, at this point, they're – their chances of hitting, like, you got to be, like, a Tom Brady. Oh, dude, there is someone that I do want to shout out. I, I don't know his name off the top of my head, but he's an interesting kid that the Steelers picked up, I think, as a UDFA. Um, I'm going to check their depth chart real quick before we move on. Um, I, He's got something about him. I, I forget exactly what it is, but it's something interesting. Okay, I can't see him, but the Steelers picked up someone, I, whether he was in this draft class or, like, he was in the draft class last year and they picked him up as a free agent. The dude's super interesting, um, and I'm excited to see what he can do during training camp because, obviously, the Steelers are in a Roll, spot where – Roland Rivers? Yes, Roland Rivers. I saw someone made a post about him in the Steelers sub or in the Dynasty sub or, or the draft sub, one of the three, and they were, like, hyping him up a little bit. I haven't watched any tape on him but they kind of convinced me to keep an eye on him. Um, I'm not going to roster him in any leagues, but I think he is someone to wor- like worth keeping track of because of the Steelers situation. And that, I mean, you saw that they went and picked up, um, what's his face from Ohio state, the kid that the football Haskins. team, yeah, Haskins. Haskins. you know, and then they, you know, they brought Dobbs back. So like they have like a thousand quarterbacks that are going to be battling it out with Mason Rudolph early in the season. So clearly the team is still looking to see if they can pick up a long-term answer before the draft. Cause they kind of know that the impending doom is coming. <laughs> True. I don't know how big Ben, I still feel like plays two more years, but all right, moving on to uh, tight ends. I just think he will <laughs> tight ends, tight end talk. Um, I'm going to love me down. some tight ends. I'm, I'm the tight end guys, guy, baby. You are Let's the go. tight end guy. I'm going to take you down a little journey here for our tier one, but you're going to have to stick with me. Um, Kyle Pitts is in your tier one, right? Way above the Moose, who we'll get to in a little bit. Just tier of his own. And he's in the tier. Wait, JT, with... JT, I'm going to have to cut you off here. If I, you're I, don't spend, cut me off. 
Wait, no, I know. I, you real quick. If you're gonna say take me on a journey, you have to start off with like once upon a time in a land far, oh far God. away. Right. <laughs> once upon episode thirty-eight, where Jake, JT, and Lunas are heavily invested in the New York Knicks. Um, a tight end emerge. I have no way. Heart attack. The tight end. <laughs> the tight end. <laughs> A tight end who is now being considered a top three tight end before he even enters the league. And you're probably wondering to yourself, this guy must be an amazing, absolute stud. He'd have to be a unicorn to be in this tier. I'm telling you right now, this man is a unicorn and he should be in this tier. Let's go! I, <laughs> Let's go! I think people are starting to, like, the Kyle Pitts train, if we're talking like the hype train, it, it probably reached its peak about a week ago, and, and now that everyone's seeing how high people are taking Kyle Pitts, you're going to get it's, those naysayers that are now gonna, going. Yes, I was, I was going to say um, there's another level it can still go to. No, no. I think uh, at this point, at this dude, point, no, the day Julio, Julio gets leaves, traded, I don't think I, – I don't care who is there, who is not there. Kyle Pitts is the number one target on that team. I don't care. Kyle Pitts is so Oh, really? <laughs> Here you Kyle, go, Pitts, Kyle, Pitts Kyle Pitts is my top – Kyle Pitts is a better wide receiver than Calvin Ridley. That's my <laughs> that's my take. I just I think Kyle Pitts is going to be a game breaking tight end. Um, the dude's a unicorn. Dude's a unicorn. And you know people are going to point to OJ Howard and a couple other guys that didn't really pay. Like Vernon Davis had, probably also had that real hype. I mean Vernon Davis did end up being a good tight end, but I just think with Kyle Pitts to steal a quote from Michael Jordan, the ceiling is the roof. Um, this man has. <laughs> you you don't know that Michael Jordan. What are you Jordan trying to say? That's great. Jeez, you don't I, know I, that Michael I Jordan. No, I have no idea where. This no, part I know you. I know. I, yeah, I know that's that quote. A Michael Jordan. It's just, that's funny. <laughs> this man has infinite potential, in my opinion. Right? Like <laughs> Travis Kel- <laughs> Travis Kelsey is someone that. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try and refocus here. <laughs> Everyone get on the same page. That is so funny, dude. I think I think the main thing I've learned from this section is JT's not a writer, uh, nor should he invest in it. <laughs> Shut up, Lunas. We're on the Kyle Pitts hype train. Yeah. Are you on or yeah. off? You're yeah, the Florida I'm Homer. on the Kyle Pitts hype train. Yeah, we're you supposed to be. Dude, did you know he went to Florida? Jake, are you, <laughs> you on the Kyle Pitts to? hype train? Yeah, I, I trade Kelsey straight up for Kyle Pitts. Yes, I'm Let's go, cool, baby! Well, Kyle Pitts, I train! <laughs> Welcome, Jake. Yes. Welcome to the hype train. Um, <laughs> I just think it, they're going to be, I, like, to get back on my journey, we're at the point where there's going to be a lot of naysayers pointing, like, it's very hard to tell when a tight end is going to be good. Like, you might have your athletic score, you might have your production, but Kyle Pitts is someone that, if he was considered a wide receiver, I'd literally have him second wide receiver behind Jamar Chase. Like, I don't and you could argue one. You could argue. I'm still taking Jamar Chase, but you could argue one. Kyle Pitts is someone that will break the mold of, like, he's going to get, you know, the only other person, the two people in this, all right, I guess it's fair. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. The, the people that are in this that, that get all the receptions, it's the kill, it's the Kelsey, it's the Waller. The, Kyle Pitts is going to get a ton of receptions. But I just think what Kyle Pitts can do with the ball it is better than the likes of um, Waller. It's better than Kittle. It's it's comparable with Kelsey. And guess what? He's only like 21. I don't even think he's 21 yet. I think he's 20. So yeah. you're getting like 10 plus years of Kyle Pitts game breaking production. And bless you, Jake. And he's probably in like the fourth, fifth pick still in your super flex draft. So at that at that moment, I'm I'm smashing the the draft button. At Kyle Pitts, um, I take him as high as three. I'm still not taking him over Justin Fields just because I think with quarterbacks, I, Justin Fields is someone I really like. And even if Kyle Pitts is game breaking, consensus just doesn't value um, tight ends as much as they do quarterbacks. So that, that that's the only thing preventing me from putting Kyle Pitts all the way at 101. To be honest, I mean, you can even get in a lot of leagues Kyle Pitts later than 104 and 105. I've seen plenty of drafts yeah, where he ends true. up going 106 or 107. Yeah. Usually, like 105, 106 is where he's off the board. But I think it's a phenomenal pick, JT. I I completely agree, dude. Um, Kyle Pitts is like if you combined all of the top tight ends in the game today <laughs> together into one player with the biggest wingspan you have ever freaking seen. 
and like a super fast 40 yard dash with elite level vertical play. It's just ridiculous. The dude he's, is he's, everything you want. He, he's the, the thing about him is I think he's, he's literally like if if you called Julio Jones a tight end. Yeah. Right back, yeah. Like, like he's crazy, that big, man. he's that fast, and he's that good with the ball. And they're just calling him a tight end because he's slightly bigger than Julio Jones is. So like, yeah, his comps. You can look at other tight ends. His comps are like fucking. You look like Mike Evans. You look like Julio. You look like Calvin. Like those are more comparable to Pitts on his play style and just his build. Dude, the only um, knock that so you I can agree. really have on him is that he's not that Rob Gronkowski, George Kittle level blocker, which he can still develop. I don't he can still, he's still. And we ain't getting blocking, points but... for blocking out <laughs> yeah. here, dude. There's We're no not pancakes. drafting someone to block. <laughs> no pancake points. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could not care. But, um, I do think. And it's, dude, wait, real quick. It's not like you can. You're gonna worry about him not playing because he can't block. Dude, they just drafted him with a fourth overall fucking pick. They're not yeah. drafting him fourth overall to be like, oh, well, we're going to take him out on rundowns because you can't block. Like, dude, fuck no. He's going to play, and he's getting the yeah. shit fucking targets. Just just juke him out, Mike Davis. <laughs> <laughs> we need Kyle Pitts out there. Um, all right. Look, we love Kyle Pitts. I can't wait for this to backfire on us. Um, but yeah. <laughs> we're going to move on to our tier wait, two. Wait, wait, hold on. Yep, yep. All right, go um, ahead, go ahead. Any one of the like, are, are you taking any one of these veteran tight ends over Kyle Pitts? I think that there is a consideration with with George Kittle. Kittle, Kittle's the only um, one. Uh, just Pitts because is my Kittle's safer, tight end too. I still think I might take Pitts, and I love Kittle. If I'm if I'm looking to like if I'm going all in the championship, I I think I'd probably take Kittle or Kelsey or, or even Waller to be honest. If I'm looking yeah. to win a championship, like this is my year. Oh, like, if you're a contender, I, it's different. Yeah, yeah. If but I've got these guys, like aging guys on my roster i know the idea is you want I'm to not go gonna and lie, dude. even even with waller even though i know waller's gonna have a better year i mean i'm a contender in our league if you told me i could get pits for darren waller i'm fucking taking it like i'm sure jake the same with kelsey <clears throat> like i already said i trade kelsey straight up yeah the, I think. The, just anything. because the way you got to think about it is like sure like you take kelsey, a small uh, hit but that long-term value oh overweight right it. Right, the, the value of a, of a dynasty player is the amount of points he's going to score per season times the number of seasons. So, how many seasons left does Kelsey have at being an elite tight end? I think we'd argue probably three, maybe four. Um, so Kyle Pitts is going to play much longer than that. That dude. The the thing with tight ends that we have seen recently is that when they fall off, it's a fucking cliff. It is like yeah, Jimmy Graham, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy yeah. Graham, Zach Ertz recently. Like, we may have seen the, the Zach Ertz cliff just now. Like, I understand he's going to go to a new situation. Maybe he has a little bit of revitalization. But I feel like even with Greg Olson to a certain extent, it was like he was good. And then that one year, it was like, well, now he kind of sucks. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thing I'll add, though, is so we're all on the same page. We love Kyle Pitts. I think he's going to be unicorn and like kind of game breaking. With that being said, I think he is going to beat this. But Evan Ingram put, is the one who I believe had the highest rookie season for a tight end. That's crazy. And even then, <laughs> it's kind of surprising. Even then, like Travis Kelsey this year doubled Evan Ingram's production. So, like, if you're looking to compete, I still feel like Evan Ingram. It, I mean, not sorry. Uh, Travis Kelsey would be someone that I probably would rather have than Kyle Pitts. Kittle, even Waller. Um, I, I think I'd just rather have those three guys. If I am saying this is a year I'm winning the championship, I feel a lot more comfortable with one of those three guys, even though I do love Kyle Pitts. Um, all right. Let's 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 now move on to – Frank, this is your guy, so I'm literally going to take you take the floor. <laughs> Sell us on the Mooth. Okay. So the Mooth, dude. So the Mooth, his, his, the players in his tier – are Cole Komet, Robert Tanyan, Adam Troutman. And the only person I'm really considering over the Muth is probably Bobby Tunyon. Just because I, I think that Bobby Tunyon is, is a nice little play. He's a nice little value play. But in terms of long-term value, give me the Muth. So the the thing with the Muth, I'll, I'll try and be quick here. You guys are writing in the chat that I got to be quick. So here's the thing with the Muth. The Muth, he went to a great situation to develop and grow as a player. Pittsburgh desperately needed greater tight end play. 
They kind of got it out of Eric Ebron, but they needed an elite level tight end to kind of be that newer age of Heath Miller. The second thing with the Muth is that he's been completely overlooked by Kyle Pitts, right? If the Muth was just the top tight end in this draft, I think that there is like a huge chance that he goes like mid to mid early second round. If, if a Kyle Pitts doesn't, that might be a little bit generous because of how many receivers there are, but this dude kind of checks all the boxes on tape. He's got great soft hands over the middle, which is desperately what the Steelers needed. I think he's all right with the, with the ball in his hands. He's a pretty damn good blocker. I think he's very underrated with his blocking and he's pretty decent as a vertical threat. I think that the Muth, is what people want all of these lower tight ends to be. And because his ADP is a little bit high, they're just disregarding him. They're like, oh, I don't want to spend a second-round pick on Pat Fryermuth when I can pick up Brevin Jordan in, in the fourth. Like, the Muth, good pick, best taxi squad player in the draft, one of the best. One thing I will add about this was before the season, he was ranked the tight end one. Uh, of this class before Kyle Pitts went and obviously exploded. Whoa, whoa, whoa. who's saying that? Who, where, where are you getting that I don't from? Know. Because that's that was me, the me and Lunas had a conversation before the draft about how Kyle Pitts is freaking ridiculous. Like before the college season, we were talking on the phone of guys that we had our eyes on. We were like, dude, Kyle Pitts. I you could ask Lunas. I was like, dude, Kyle Pitts is a top twenty pick. Like this dude is no, freaking yeah, ridiculous. True. We were talking about that because I think Florida and South Carolina were playing Week One, right? So uh, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, Dude, like they're one of the earliest man. matchups. And literally in that first game, Pitts went crazy, and we were like, okay, yeah, we were right. <laughs> this guy's insane. <laughs> he's, he's just a freak, dude. No, but you're right though. He was. A, but no, the gap was, was a high before prospect. the season. The gap. No, was you're a right. Lot you're right. You're right. He was a very highly rated tight end prospect, and a yeah. lot of people had him as a first round. Yeah, yeah people thought he was tight end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So like. Th- to say that he's not worth it just because of Kyle Pitts is crazy. Like I agree. I think if you can get him in the late second round of your rookie draft, I think it's a great pick. I think the Steelers use their tight end historically, and he's going to easily eclipse Eric Ebron moving forward. Um, yeah. The only other thing I'll add on this is he's. We're going to get into the tier three and tier four guys. I think he's the only other guy I'd want. A tight end from this draft. I don't really care about any of the other guys. I don't think they're going to add much value to my team. I don't think they're going to be anything. But with that, let's just move on to it. I'm, I'm just going to combine these two tiers, even though there kind of is a slight tier break. Um, We've got tier three. The funny part is, for the rest of these guys, I think one of the guys in tier four is my favorite out of the rest of these names. I mean, um, yeah, we'll see. We've got Brevin Jordan and Hunter Long as they're technically Tier 3, and they're with the likes of Hayden Hurst, Eric Ebron, and Dalton Parham. And then Tier 4 is Tommy Tremble and Trey McKitty with the likes of Jared Cook, Albert O, and Will Disley. Um, Albert O. In my give, opinion, give me, this is just me. Jag City. It is, it is Jag City. These are dart throws. If I could have any dart throw out of all these guys, honestly, it's McKitty. Um, I will just take the chance uh, on him hopefully being able to beat out uh, Parham. I hope I said his name right. Uh, and paired with Justin Herbert. Um, it, none of these guys, though, I'm going crazy over. Um, I'd rather take some of those dart throw receivers in those later rounds where those guys are going to be taken. You would need something crazy from from these guys for me to even put them on my board. Like They'd have to have some kind of George Kittle-like ascendance. Because uh, to yeah. me, these, none of these guys really... I mean, even Brevin Jordan, who was touted highly, I would just... Like, I thought he was okay, but he, he's on a team with the Texans, too, which is just not – like, he might see the field, which I guess is a plus, but, like, I just don't think he's doing anything. I don't think he ever will. I um, think there are three guys that I would take from all these tiers, two of which are okay. not on here. Okay. The first is, like Luna said, Trey McKitty. The second is Kylan Granson. Um, he's yeah, grown on me a little bit. Yeah. You know, obviously you got the camp reports and just kind of looking at the fact that recently there have been a lot of like receiver conversions to tight end that have worked out. And mm-hmm. I understand that Granson was a tight end at SMU, but he was a glorified receiver in that scheme looking at him mm-hmm. on tape. Mm-hmm. And then the third would be Zach Davidson, the punter tight end in Minnesota. <laughs> Listen, you guys can clown me all you want. Zach Davidson is an undrafted free agent pickup. I think is great. Dude, he's got good tape. Like you're going to judge him because he was also a punter. 
but he's good. Like he's actually low key a, a pretty damn good tight end that I'm excited for. I I still love me some Don Parham. Um, I don't yeah. know why. He's just like, like, he's, baby. He's freaky athletic, like Justin Herbert. He's gonna be that kind of red zone vulture guy that like Keenan Allen and Mike Williams owners are gonna hate. Um, but that's. Uh, I, I just I don't really care about any of these guys. Alberto, I like him when Noah Fant is out. Alberto is like a good kind Alberto. of replacement guy. Fant gets hurt. Um, oh, these guys are. They're, yeah, they're, again, we're talking like they're below the wasteland. They're not even yeah. in the wasteland currently. Um, what is Hayden Hurst's value now that um, Kyle Pitts is a thing? Like zero. I couldn't even get a fifth round pick. I was gonna say if someone offered me any fourth, I would take <laughs> Hayden Hurst. Poor Hayden Hurst can't yeah. can't get out of that whole like oh I'm behind a tight end that's just better than me. Yeah. He was getting so <laughs> much. If he, much if he hype performed, if he performed before. better last year, I think it's yeah. a different situation. He was in like the perfect situation for him. Yeah, he he didn't he wasn't bad, good. but he didn't live up to expectation. Because uh, if he was that good, the Falcons would have probably just traded down. Um, so tough shit. <laughs> you were a first round pick. You got Harsh words from Lewis. <laughs> um, I think that's a good place to wrap it up, though. Episode 38 in the books. Um, thanks, y'all, for watching. I threw out a y'all. I'm in Florida, Southern JTs. Hopefully, by the Shoot time you guys out. are watching this, Knicks are up 1 0. Yeah, go Knicks. Um, we appreciate y'all. Like our video, to our subscribe YouTube. to us on YouTube, subscribe uh, to us on Twitch. Anything you guys want us to cover, just let us know. We'll be happy to. Um, and have fun. Let us have any questions if you have your rookie drafts coming up also. All right. Thanks, everyone. Go Knicks. Thanks, guys.